Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which you might be able to see around me and in front of me this time around. It's tropical houseplants. Now today I want to talk about a very cool, very dear plant, to me anyway, that is also a flowering indoor or houseplant or tropical plant, which is the Plumeria frangipani. And you might be able to see this in front of me. It's not one of the big ones that everybody's really excited about when it comes to aroids and philodendrons and all these things. But I couldn't find an awful lot of videos about this plant. There are some older videos that I could find that might have changed this was a while ago when I was looking for videos on YouTube on how to care for this plant indoors. And there wasn't an awful lot. Now, a bit of history on this is, and I've mentioned this a couple of times on my channel, I'm originally from the Mediterranean, Greece and Cyprus specifically. And this is a plant that we have growing as trees on the side of the road, essentially, so they can be laden with blooms. So this was a very special plant that I also wanted to get in my collection because the scent of the blooms just reminds me of my childhood. But I know this is a plant that you can find in a lot of tropical locations. Obviously, Greece and Cyprus aren't tropical necessarily, but we do grow, grow tropical plants outdoors. Some of the biggest plants that we've got growing on the sidewalk along the roads are the ficus elastica or the rubber tree just to give you a bit of an indication there but with this plant specifically and i will lift it up so you can maybe see what the rest of it looks like there's one stem it splits into two and it is in terracotta i've got it in my chunky aroid soil mix feel free to check it out on my channel to see what i do to mix that up and all the ingredients that i use but essentially, even if you don't have that, something really light and airy will really help. So for instance, if you've got soil, if you do 50% soil or any other kind of growing media and 50% perlite, it will probably be quite, quite happy. I almost, almost treat this a bit like a cactus, just to give you an idea. Because you need to remember the stem itself is quite thick and it's quite succulent as well in that respect. The leaves are quite thick as well. So there's a lot of places for this plant to maintain some moisture. And previously I was also growing this, if I'm not mistaken, in a net pot, and that was doing great as well. I will always let the soil dry out completely, and I will make sure that that soil is fully dry before I will then drench it all the way through. In terms of humidity, I've always, and actually no, I've not always had this growing in my plant room. I've had this growing in household humidity and it was fine. The one thing I will say in household humidity, and I had it in a very, very bright south facing window, this wants as much light as you can possibly give it. This is a plant that I haven't tried outdoors for the summer yet, but I think I probably will be doing it next year. But it loves light basically. And it, I found when it was indoors in regular household humidity, it would bloom, it would bloom quite a lot as well. That wasn't a problem of getting it to bloom frequently, but the blooms, the blooms generally don't last for much longer than a couple of days, two or three days, and then they will drop off. I found in slightly higher humidity, or a lot higher humidity actually, if I say that in my conservatory, the buds and the blooms will stay on for a bit longer. So it, I might be able to stretch the blooms to four or five, or maybe even six days. And generally trying to keep this plant happy hasn't been too, too difficult, as I said, the, the watering is going to be the big thing. You don't want to give it root rot, so wait until it's dry before you water. Check for pests, and the only real pest that I've had on this plant, and it's been in this conservatory, and again, I don't know whether or not it's because it was a pest that's prevalent within the conservatory or within, if it's more specific to this plant, was mealybugs. So I was checking it for mealybugs, and it did get some mealybugs. I don't think think I have ever had spider mites on this. I did have thrips in the previous property, but I was able to get rid of it relatively quickly. The other thing that you need to remember about this plant is if growing indoors, and this was my experience, and I know from a lot of people online, this is a lot of people's experience, is that it can potentially drop all of its leaves in the winter months, only to then regrow them back. So at some point you might just end up with a bit of a stick sticking out of some soil, definitely reduce the watering there because it's not the water it doesn't need to go because it doesn't have any leaves it doesn't need to go to the leaves it doesn't evaporate from the leaves 
so it doesn't transpire essentially. But uh, yeah, definitely a very, very, very cool plant. I'm trying to think if there's anything else fertilizing definitely in the summer months, actually even in the winter until it loses the leaves. I will fertilize as normal. In the winter, I might just pull back on the strength of the fertilizer. But in the summer, I did try fertilizing this with kind of bloom booster fertilizers where they had a higher phosphorus so that it kind of promote the blooms. I didn't find that it helped that much. I kept it on a kind of an overall fertilizer. I use liquid gold leaf. I've mentioned this several times before on my channel. And actually that's worked really well for this. And actually for most of my blooming plants, the same thing goes for my hibiscus and my Hoyas. I tried with the Bloom Boost fertilizer. It didn't promote it anymore. So moving it, moving them all onto the same fertilizer, which is a liquid gold leaf, has worked really well. If anything, it's actually got more blooms now than it would have done with a Bloom Booster fertilizer. Again, this might just be my experience. It might've been the specific fertilizer that I was using, but I don't think you need to stress too much about getting it specific fertilizers. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. This is the thing. It's always a good sign when you can see me on a video scrambling to find if there's anything else that I need to tell you about this plant because it tells you that generally this, at least in my experience, hasn't been a difficult plant for me to care for. Some of the ones that I've got a lot of stuff to tell you about generally means it might be a bit fuzzy. But this one is a relatively straightforward plant. Yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say for this. It might be a relatively short video. But have you grown this in your conditions? What have your experiences been? Maybe share it in the comments and we can have a conversation down below. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.